Welcome to EV Tech Explained. Tesla claimed to have a battery which has both the highest energy density on the market, whilst simultaneously having the lowest cost per kilowatt hour. In this three-part video series, we will explore the chemistry and format of the cell, we'll examine the module packaging efficiency and design, and assess how well the modules are integrated into a battery pack. In this video, we'll begin by looking at and inside the cell, we'll discuss the reasons why Tesla chose the cylindrical cell format, and look at the chemistry within the cell, including a commentary on how it differs from that of their competitors. We'll run through the cell specifications, and finally, we'll discuss why this cell was right for Tesla. Battery cells typically come in three formats, cylindrical, prismatic, and pouch. In cylindrical cells, electrode materials are rolled into a cylinder and inserted into a typically aluminium can. Prismatic cells come in many configurations, however automotive prismatic cells are cuboid in shape to stack well into a module. Internally they contain a number of windings similar to those found in cylindrical cells, which are subsequently compressed to best fit the internal volume of the cell. Pouch cells use stacked electrodes and separators, which are then inserted into an aluminium and polymer laminate. Cylindrical cells are the lowest cost option because they're produced in huge quantities in standardized sizes, primarily because the cost to manufacture cylindrical cells is less than that of both the prismatic and pouch cell. As a number of different companies are producing cylindrical cells of standardized sizes and have been doing so since the first commercial application of lithium-ion batteries in 1991 by Sony, the manufacturing process and cell internal design is very, very well optimized. This highly optimized design reduces non-active components, that is, those which do not directly contribute to energy storage, and minimises the space which is not used to store energy, and hence cylindrical cells typically have the highest cell level volumetric energy density. It is not all positive, however. Cylindrical cells are difficult to cool, and often cooling results in the induction of large temperature gradients across the cell, which result either in the reduction of performance or a detriment to cell life. When we look inside an 18650 cell later in this video, we will understand why they are difficult to cool in an even manner. The 21700 cells are likely to have fewer issues than the 18650 cells. Also, geometrically, cylindrical cells do not package ideally into cuboid battery modules. The volumetric energy density, i.e. the energy which you can fit into a particular space, drop significantly when you consider the energy in a module rather than the energy within a cell. Often, new chemistry is first put into cylindrical cells due to the maturity of the manufacturing process and highly controllable mechanical conditions. Automotive prismatic cells typically conform to standards developed by the large German manufacturers within the VDA group. The prismatic cells transfer some design complexity to the cell manufacturer but make things easier for the car maker. They stack easily into modules and are relatively simple to cool given both their exterior and internal geometry which helps heat transfer. This is best observed in the manufacture of the BMW i3 battery which is very highly automated. I'll put a link in the video description. You should definitely check it out. Although the large cell terminals help reduce resistance and the large case aids heat transfer, they both add weight, which in turn reduces cell level energy density. Additionally, because we are compressing the multiple cylindrically wound electrodes, compression is not equal at all points, which does lead to some problems with lifetime after repeated charge and discharge cycles. Prismatic cells also tend to be of high capacity to keep inactive material to a minimum, Hence why the 2016 BMW i3 uses 94 amp hour cells and the 2017 e-Golf uses 37 amp hour cells, which compares to Tesla's 3.4 amp hours per cell. This limits the automaker's ability to offer battery packs of multiple sizes. We'll touch more on this later. 
pout cells offer a high degree of design flexibility as they can often easily be scaled to multiple physical sizes and the capacity can easily be altered by the manufacturer by adding or removing layers to change the thickness of the cell. Many battery makers offer pouch cells and their gravimetric energy density is competitive with cylindrical cells. They are more complex to integrate into modules and both cooling and compression need to be carefully controlled. So given what we know now, why did Tesla choose to use cylindrical cells? What exactly was going through their mind when designing the battery pack for the Model S? Well, the cylindrical cell offered the highest cell level energy density and actually this is still true today of all the electric vehicles on the market. Importantly, at the time cylindrical cells were produced in large numbers for portable electronics, meaning small cylindrical cells had the lowest cost per kilowatt hour. This also meant that an expensive capital investment in cell tooling was not required, which is of vital importance for a young company with limited capital at their disposal. As the manufacturing cost for cylindrical cells is the lowest of the three formats, cylindrical cells remain the focus of the Model 3 and the Gigafactory today. Before the Model S, EVs were certainly not regarded as cool, and to show what EVs could really do and to build the Tesla and the EV brand, large battery packs which could output huge power were needed. Large battery packs, however, are super expensive, therefore it was also desirable to offer smaller battery packs which would make the car more accessible to most customers. To make a battery pack scalable to multiple capacities, it is necessary to have small capacity cells where a large number are connected in parallel. Let's consider the BMW i3 for a moment. The i3 uses very large 94 amp hour Samsung cells all of which are connected in series to form a battery pack of 33 kilowatt hours. To offer a battery pack of, for example, 45 kilowatt hours, we cannot simply add cells in series. The voltage will change and the BMS, motor and inverter would need to be modified. If we added a parallel string of cells, we would double the number of cells, increasing the pack capacity to 66 kilowatt hours. Also, the pack would no longer fit within the chassis of the car. By using small capacity cells and changing the number of cells in parallel, Tesla has greater flexibility. The 100 kWh battery pack has 96 cells in series and 86 in parallel. The 75 kWh battery retains 86 cells in series and reduces the number of cells in parallel to 63. The Model S and Model X both use Panasonic's 18650 cell whilst the Model 3 uses Panasonic's 21700 cell. The 18650 cell is 18mm in diameter and 65mm long. Thus, the 21700 cell is 21mm in diameter and 70mm long. The extra length and increased diameter of the cell result in approximately 33% more active material within the cell to store energy. Anode and cathode electrode and separator sheets are wound into a cylinder around a central steel core. The cathode electrode materials are coated onto both sides of an aluminium foil, whilst the anode electrode materials are coated onto both sides of a copper foil. The electrodes contain a protruding tab, which is then welded to the terminals of the can. So let's take a closer look at the Panasonic 18650. The cell has a capacity of 3.4 amp hours or 12.4 watt hours with a nominal voltage rating of 3.66 volts. Resistance varies with state of charge and temperature but is typically around 30 milliohms. Given a cell volume of 16 milliliters and a mass of 49 grams, the cell has an impressive energy density of 254 watt hours per kilogram and 755 watt hours per liter. So we're able to get hold of cells by removing them from a Tesla module. Using a pipe cutter, we can get inside. In this image, you see the internals of the cell, also known as the jelly roll, with just the outer aluminium can removed. The outer copper foil extends from the anode to wrap around the cell. The insulation tip helps to hold the jelly roll in the desired position during manufacture and protect the negative tab. 
the jelly roll is 60 millimeters long. The jelly roll is longer than you might expect when fully unwound. Leave a comment below with your guess. The positive tab protrudes from the center of the jelly roll, whilst the negative tab is attached to the outer surface. As previously mentioned, the negative current collector extends around the outer surface of the jelly roll. In practice, this is achieved by the anode electrode coating not extending to the end of the foil. Moving on to looking at the cell chemistry. Lithium ion batteries typically consist a lithium metal oxide cathode, a graphite anode, and a polymer separator to prevent contact between the anode and the cathode. Many early EVs, PHEVs and hybrids used lithium anion phosphate cathodes due to their high level of safety, relatively low cost, high power output and good cycle life. However, they possess poor energy storage capability in comparison to their competition and have a lower voltage. Most manufacturers currently use lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide cathodes or NMC for short. The ratio of nickel, manganese and cobalt is varied, with a drive to increase the nickel content and reduce the cobalt content to reduce the cost and increase the stored energy. Tesla's cell uses lithium nickel cobalt aluminium oxide, or NCA for short. NCA is similar to NMC, but uses aluminium rather than manganese to stabilise the crystal structure of the lithium nickel oxide. NCA has a higher energy capacity than NMC, however it will enter thermal runaway at a lower temperature, therefore it's typically only regarded safe for small cells which are under approximately 6 amp hours. Consequently, for cells larger than this, such as those used in the Nissan Leaf, Chevrolet Bolt, Renault Zoe and BMW i3, NMC must be used rather than NCA. Let's move on to look at the other side of the equation, the anode. The anode on almost all lithium ion batteries is a form of graphite. A strong desire exists to transition to silicon, as silicon has the potential for significantly greater energy storage than carbon or graphite. For a given mass, silicon can store over 10 times the energy for a given volume and 3 times the amount of energy for a given mass. The problem with silicon, however, is the expansion during charge. At the top, we can see the different stages that graphite goes through during a charge, which results in a volumetric change of a little more than 10%. Silicon, on the other hand, undergoes a volume change of almost 400%, which in turn not only pulverizes the structure of the electrode on each cycle, but requires a great deal of space to be left for the cell to expand into. Typically, this is solved by blending a small amount of silicon oxide with graphite to form a composite electrode. The first generation Model S contained cells which had a traditional graphite anode. The second generation Model S increased battery capacity partially through the addition of a small amount of silicon to the anode. The 21700 cell in the Model 3 is almost certain to have a little more silicon blended into the anode than the current 18650 cell. Future cells will feature much higher levels of silicon. This is a major area of research and development for almost all cell manufacturers. So why was the combination of an NCA cathode and a graphite silicon anode right for Tesla? Well, it offers state-of-the-art energy density, which remains class-leading today. Tesla's use of low-capacity cells enables the use of NCA as a cathode material which is attractive because of its great energy capacity. The addition of silicon to the anode will generally reduce the fast charge capability of a cell. However, as these cells are integrated into very large battery packs, each cell does not necessarily need to accept a large amount of power in order for the vehicle to accept the maximum of 120 kilowatts from the supercharger network. If you'd like a more in-depth video about battery chemistries, just leave a comment below and let me know what specifically you're interested in. Tesla claims its new 21700 cells have the highest energy density in the world. 
given that the 18650 cell used in the Model S and Model X still has the highest energy density of any production road vehicle, there's little reason to doubt Tesla's claims. However, it is important to note that pack energy density is far more important than cell energy density. Thank you for watching. Please do leave any questions you have below and I'll do my best to answer them. I also wanted to mention my planned upcoming videos. I am currently working on parts 2 and 3 of this video series. In the next part, I'll take an in-depth look at the module, and in part 3, I'll look at transforming modules into packs. I'm also working on an in-depth comparison of the 18650 and 21700 cells. If you have any requests for EV tech to be explained, leave those requests below.